Hello, everyone. Thanks for logging in. Um, my name is Robert Hudson. I'm the director of our Camp Counselors Canada program. Good morning in progress. <laughs> we're lucky to have Trent Diaz, the uh, summer camp director for Camp Chief Hector, which is a wonderful camp partner with, that we've been working with for many years. And we've just had a great track record with we're the happy participants that have enjoyed their summers there. So um, Trent prepared a little presentation and we should have lots of time for questions. Um, I think he's going to be happy if, if you, you know, feel free to save your questions to the end or put them in the chat or um, just turn off your mute button if you want to jump in there. But I'll let you uh, take it away, Trent. Perfect. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, like Robert said, my name's Trent. I am the camp director at Camp Chief Hector YMCA um, here uh, in Canada. We're located um, about 45 minutes west of uh, the, the city of Calgary and about 20 minutes east of the town of Canmore um, in the province of Alberta. Um, as you can see here um, in my cover page, um, we, we are in a beautiful location and I'm hoping uh, to share a bit more with you about the location here, show you some pictures, um, give you lots of details about what it's like to work at camp, the kinds of programs that we offer, um, and then uh, have some time to answer any questions that you have um, either throughout, if you want to raise your hand virtually, put a question into the chat, that's great, or we can wait till the end as well. Um, so uh, before I get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, about Camp Chief Hector, maybe what sets us apart from other camps um, and the types of programs that we offer here. So um, we are a part of the YMCA of Calgary. Um, so some of you might be you know, familiar with uh, the YMCA in general. Um, we're, we're closely linked to the YMCA of Calgary. Um, and we, we, we are a part of a, a, a large organization that has a lot of different types of social outreach programs, fitness programs, things like that. Um, but we are specifically the, the, the Camp Chief Hector branch of the YMC of Calgary, and we specialize in um, outdoor programming. And that looks different depending on the season. So we have, um, we have uh, th three primary seasons. We have a spring season, a summer season, and then a fall season. There's also a smaller winter season as well, but that won't be as applicable for, for you guys. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the differences there. So in the springtime, um, we have a school season. We call it the outdoor, outdoor schools program. Um, and in that program, we have uh, primarily uh, schools um, that range from anywhere from about grade five here um, all the way up to about grade eight. Um, so kind of like that, that middle school range. Um, and the kids are coming out here uh, to stay with us at camp for four days. Um, so they stay overnight for three days. Uh, they're here with their teachers and we're putting on a program that uh, closely relates to the curriculum objectives of that grade. Um, so outdoor programs, uh, learning about things like trees and forests, wetlands, um, animal life, um, things like that. Um, as well, we focus a lot on um, outdoor leadership programs as well and learning about um, leadership styles, learning about communication styles, um, team building, and all those kinds of things. Now, the, the spring season is a bit different than the summer season because we also have the teachers out here to support. So in the spring season, you would be working um, with your own specific group of, of students. Um, generally, you're working with about a group of about 10 students or so with that teacher support. Um, in the summer, we move into an overnight summer camp program, also sometimes known as a residential camp program. Um, and in that program, it uh, looks a little bit different because it's not groups of students coming out. It's individual campers that register for a, for a camp experience. And that camp experience can range anywhere from a day camp experience all the way up to a two-month summer-long experience. Um, and I'll go through a bit of the specifics um, in terms of the differences between those, those, those experiences. Um, but the, the big difference is that there's no teachers here supporting that directly. So um, the staffing structure looks a little bit different in the summertime. Um, so you'd be working with a specific age group of, of campers. Um, you work with a, a co-counselor. So the ratio is actually two staff to about eight campers. Um, and again, that sometimes depends on the specific program you, you work in, but that's our primary ratio. Um, you also have a lot of uh, different positions at camp um, that aren't directly in ratio. So we call those kind of like support staff positions. So there's, there's leadership positions where um, you might have uh, like a coordinator who oversees the whole program at that lodge. And then you might have a team lead um, that oversees a specific section at that lodge. So there's different levels of support as well. <laughs> 
um, that uh, are available for the counselors to to get support, you know, get coverage, things like that. Ask questions, you know, if you're if you're experiencing a challenging situation, to look for feedback on how you might handle, you know, a, a specific behavior that you're experiencing within your group. Um, so that's the that's what the summer looks like. Um, in the in the fall, we go back to an outdoor school style program that is very similar to the spring. Um, and that uh, we'll go through exactly the date ranges um, of the spring, summer and fall program. But like I talked about with the spring program, the fall looks very similar to that. Um, so in terms of, uh, of, of what sets us apart from other camps, I think that uh, what Camp Chief Hector is known for is a really, um, a really robust expedition or out tripping program. Um, so as I go through my slides today, you'll see some of the amazing areas we get to visit. Um, we do a lot of offsite expedition programming and that's hiking trips um, and canoe trips. Um, I'll go through some of the details of those specifically, but the, some of the areas we travel to are Banff National Park, um, the Kananaskis Valley, as you can see in the photo right here, um, and you are taking your group of kids in the summertime specifically offsite to go do these, these awesome trips and you're camping out, you're hiking, you know, day after day, they range anywhere from, uh, like three days all the way up into about 18 days. And our longest program is a 40 day canoe trip. So I'll go through some of those as well. Um, the thing I love about camp and the reason, you know, the reason why I'm still here is the community. I think that. We are so lucky to be in a location that is beautiful. You know, people are drawn to the mountains and that is a great reason to come here. But the thing I love most about camp is the sense of community and belonging that you achieve here, the friendships that you make from all over the world. I'm so fortunate to have built really deep connections with the people that, uh, that, I, that I work with here. And they're the reason I, I keep coming back and I will for a very long time. Um, so I, I hope that that's an experience you're also able to obtain when you come to Canada. So I'll dive into the presentation here. Um, I'm not going to go through the details of every specific slide. I'll, I'll, I might breeze through a few, but the, the, the important thing here is that you get a sense of, you know, what this program looks like. Um, so to start off, I'd like to do an, a land acknowledgement. Um, so in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work and play on the traditional territories of the Treaty 7 Nations. These are the ancestral lands of the three bands of the Stony Nakoda Nation, the Chiniki, the Wesley and the Bearspaw, the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Sitsika, the North and South Pakani Nations, and the Kainai Tribe, the Tsitsina Nation of the Diné people, as well as the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. We gratefully acknowledge that this camp is named after Stony Nakoda Chief Hector Crawler, and that we are currently stewards of the land on which our camp sits. We are committed to exploring and understanding the historical roots of the YMCA relationship with the Stony Nakoda people. Um, the, in the photo here, you'll see one of our teepees. So this is one of our uh, accommodations where we have our staff and campers sleep. Um, this is a summer specific accommodation. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a really amazing experience for kids to have the opportunity to, to learn about the Stony Nakoda people, to learn about, um, you know, what the, the traditional use of a teepee is and to experience a night in the teepee. It's something that people absolutely love. Um, this is a bit of a map of our site. Um, so you can see here, um, we've got a large lake um, called Chilver Lake. Um, that is where we do uh, water, uh, waterfront activities such as canoeing. Um, we've got also a number of smaller ponds and different bodies of water where we, you know, we go and visit, do some kind of uh, ecological programming as well, um, and go and, and stop off and have lunches on things like day hikes. Uh, we've got a large um, barn area that I'll talk a little bit about where we have our horses. Um, we've got two primary lodges. So there's Beaufort Lodge here, as well as Hector Lodge at the far end of camp. Um, in terms of the location, um, we are located in Bow Valley Provincial Park. Um, as I said, about one hour west of Calgary oh, um, and 20 minutes yeah. east of Canmore. Um, we, we serve around 2,200 campers. Um, we did that. We, we served that many last year. This coming year, we're looking at serving around 2,800 campers. So we're, we're looking at some growth year over year. Whoa, you? you can see in the photo just at the bottom here, this is a picture of one of our lodges. So you've got Hector Lodge. And the mountain that we sit at the base of is uh, a mountain called Mount Yates. Uh, we call it Lookout Mountain. Um, and that is one of the first mountains you come to when you arrive in the Canadian Rockies. Um, and when you, when you, like, let's say you fly into Calgary, um, you'll drive west for about 45 minutes or so. And all of a sudden, boom, the mountains appear. And we are right at the start of those mountains. 
Um, another really uh, uh, popular landmark for us is Mount Yamneska, which I've got circled here. Um, and that is just across the highway from us. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is, uh, this is Mount Yamneska. Some of you might have even seen this before. And if you're talking about um, the location of where we're located, uh, Mount Yamneska is one of those landmarks that a lot of people are aware of. And it's a very, very popular uh, mountain for rock climbing as well as hiking. So this is kind of like what, uh, what life at camp is. Uh, I've got a list of activities that we do here, also a typical day at camp. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot of that, you know, take a look at that in a bit more in depth. I'm not going to go through all of those activities, um, but uh, some of the things that we like to focus on are things like archery, hiking, canoeing, horseback riding, um, arts and crafts, team building activities, and, and, and so on and so forth. This is a photo of uh, one of our campers on top of one of our horses, just getting saddled up and, and, and ready to go on a trail ride. Um, this is one of our most popular uh, program areas and one of the things that we are known quite well for is our horse program. Um, if, you, if you're not a horse person, that's okay. We, we offer a lot of training and kind of entry level horse programming. Actually, my first day at Camp Chief Hector was um, in the fall of 2018. I drove across the country and I decided, you know, I'm starting up this new job and my first day um, was the horse in service. And that's the day where we train all the staff on how to saddle horses, how to ride a horse. Um, and I had never, I had never ridden a horse before. I'd never even, you know, really gotten that close to a horse. So it was a bit nerve wracking, but by the end of that day, I was riding the horse and I was feeling, you know, pretty confident in my ability to do that. So, um, this is a great place to learn if you are interested in horses. Uh, we've got archery. We've got a, a few different archery ranges here at camp. Uh, outdoor living skills is something that we focus a lot on. So, you know, things like navigation, things like uh, shelter building, setting up a good tarp, um, uh, you know, how to, how to pack a backpack for an overnight trip um, and, uh, and the, the types of wildlife and vegetation that we'll run across um, in our travels. Uh, another activity area that we have is the low ropes area. Um, so we also call this a challenge course. So this is kind of like a, a, a ropes course that's close to the ground where people can challenge themselves. Um, and it's a great entry level activity before we get to our high ropes uh, course, which you'll see soon too. So we call it higher ground. And this is a, you know, sometimes uh, people call this like treetop trekking, um, but uh, a high ropes course where you're harnessed in and you're doing, um, you're doing challenges um, at elevation. So uh, this one in the photo here, you can see we've got two people who are trying to balance themselves on top of a mast-like structure where they climb up there and try to work together to balance right on top. Another one of my favorites is to jump off of the mast structure. And the goal is to try to reach out about 10 feet or so to hit a hanging buoy in the air. But you're just jumping into the open air. And the rest of the group is there uh, uh, controlling you on belay um, so that you're safe. We've also got a waterfront area, as I talked about. So this is our Chilver Lake. Um, it's not quite as full as it is in this picture currently, um, but we're hoping that the water levels come up um, uh, hopefully as soon as they can. But uh, a beautiful area, one of my favorite areas at camp, where you get a beautiful view of the Bow Valley heading on down this way where you see the sunset happening. Uh, campfire is also an integral uh, program area for us. So uh, it's not just about, you know, having a fire and, and learning about how to, how to light a fire, but it's about, you know, the social interaction that happens around the fire, um, singing songs, telling stories, and, and really challenging ourselves socially so to get outside of our comfort zone, to get up in front of the other people and sing a silly song or, or tell a story. Um, one of my absolute favorite, favorite program areas and one where we have a lot of impact on, on our youth. Uh, now we'll get into a bit of a description of the different programs that we have uh, specifically in summer camp. So again, I talked about the school seasons in the spring and the fall. Um, these are specifically related to the summer camp program, um, which happens in July and August. Um, so we have a Chinookwe program for seven to nine year olds. We have a Mistea program for 10 to 11 year olds, a Kananaskan program for 12 and 13 year olds. And these are our six day or our one week programs. We also have 13 day or two week programs for our 10 and 11 year olds and our 12 and 13 year olds, um, as well as a 13 day program for um, our 14 and 15 year olds. We call this our pioneer section. Um, and this is where the, the, the real um, tripping starts to happen. 
And we actually split this section into two focus groups. Um, so we have a, a canoe focus as well as a hike focus. Um, so campers have the option of choosing whether or not they want to focus, you know, their time into hiking in the mountains or paddling. Um, and their expedition will will relate to that. Um, next up, I'll be going through some of the expeditions that we have as well. So you'll get to see what some of those trips look like. Next up, we've got our leadership-based program. So this is when we're starting to get into programs that are designed to focus on, on building the confidence and the, and the skill set of our campers um, with, the, with the intention that they may come and work as staff members, or they may go on to some other area of, of their life where these skills are going to become applicable. Um, and, and leadership is a big focus of that. Um, so we've got a leadership hike focus as well as a leadership canoe focus. And this is where the, the expeditions get quite long. So um, at this level um, with our 16 year olds, we uh, go on 18 day expeditions and their whole program is a month long experience. So now I'll get into some information specifically about the expedition program here at Camp Chief Factor. Um, you can see here a photo of one of our expeditions. This is actually an expedition that uh, went out in 2019. This is our leadership canoe expedition that uh, in this picture, they were on the drive to the Athabasca River and they were stopping off at uh, uh, the Icefields Parkway um, at the Athabasca Glacier uh, just to have some lunch. So this is a bit of a, a summary of the types of expeditions that we do. You can see here that, that the age of the campers and the length of trip that they go on, whether or not it's a hike or a canoe focus, and then, then the general locations that we go to. Um, feel free to take a screenshot of this. Uh, you can do some Google searching of some of these uh, locations where we're doing our, our expeditions, and you can get some more pictures. One of our highlights um, in terms of a trip I like to talk about is our Paradise Pass trip. And this is a seven day hiking ex expedition that goes for about 100 kilometers in Kananaskis, Alberta. Um, so this is uh, in the Kananaskis Valley, which um, Camp Chief Hector is located just at the mouth of the valley. Um, uh, just uh, just kind of as you as you go all the way to the end here, um, basically all the way on the other side of the mountain over here. Um, so this is one of our offset expeditions. Um, this trip specifically is in our pioneer hike focus. So for our 14 and 15 year olds, uh, one of our pioneer canoe focus trips is the North Saskatchewan river. Um, even though Saskatchewan's in the name of the river it's actually located in Alberta. Um, so, uh, the North Saskatchewan river trip is a seven day trip that covers about 220 kilometers. And that goes from Saunders to the town of, of Drayton Valley. One of our highlight trips, um, uh, one of the ones that I talked about earlier with that photo at the beginning of this section is the Athabasca River trip. This is our leadership trip for our 16 year olds um, that wanna focus on canoe expeditions. This is a 15 to 18 day trip um, that covers 600 kilometers um, of the Athabasca River from the, the town of Jasper all the way to the town of Athabasca. Um, as you can see here, an absolutely stunning river. I had the pleasure of paddling this river back in the springtime uh, for the first time, and I had an absolute blast, really a life-changing experience, I think, for anybody that has the pleasure of paddling. And then uh, kind of our, our culmination in terms of our camp programs is our Sacton A canoe trip. I mentioned it briefly at the start, but this is our 40-day our canoe trip. Um, that actually goes through a good portion of the Northwest Territories here in Canada. So you can see on the map uh, in the photo here, um, the actual distance that it covers. So it's around 1300 kilometers. And uh, we're paddling from Fort Simpson to the town of Anuvik in the Northwest Territories. Um, you can see uh, just north of Anuvik here is the, the town of Taktoyaktak. And this is right on the Arctic Ocean. So the trip actually ends about 100 kilometers south of the Arctic Ocean. Um, but this past year, uh, the group that we that we had out here um, finished in Inuvik and had the pleasure of getting onto a shuttle that took them right to Taktoyaktak, and they went for a swim in the Arctic Ocean. Um, so that was that was a, a highlight for for our 17 year old Saxony campers. Uh, next up, I'll go through a bit of the, the specifics around which positions we have available when. Um, so our spring schools positions, we've got our counselors. Like I said, we've got those team leads, coordinators, and we also have uh, 
an expedition scout uh, style position available in the spring um, where you get to go and see some of these areas and scout out some new areas potentially that we that we will visit in the summertime. Um, the expedition, well, really the team lead positions, the coordinator positions and those expedition scout positions are, are generally filled by returning staff members um, who are experienced members of our team. And a lot of the times our first year staff members fill the role of counselor uh, working directly with the, the campers that we have in the, in the schools program. And that goes from April 27th until about June 15th. Next up is the summer camp program, which runs from June 18th until the end of August. Um, we've got uh, our Chinookwe Mistea counselors. So again, these relate back to those ages. So you'll specifically work with a part our particular age of campers. So you can say, you know what, I'm really experienced with the younger kids. I'd like to work in that Chinookwe or Mistea program. And then as you go up to the Canonask and the Pioneer and the Leadership program, um, those age ranges get, get higher. We also have summer resource positions. So there's different positions available that are not directly working with your own specific group of kids. You're still working with the kids, but in a, in a more of a support capacity. So a resource counselor, for example, is somebody that might work down at a higher ground area and specialize in ropes and harnesses and facilitating that type of program. We have our wranglers that are at the barn and they're specializing in, in, uh, in horse programming. Um, and they're the ones who are leading those trail rides. Um, we've got section directors who are the people who are overseeing specific sections of around 20 or so staff members um, that are working with each of those age groups. And then we have our program coordinators um, who are overseeing kind of larger chunks of the program. So as I showed you in the map at the beginning of the presentation, we have two primary lodges, the Beaufort Lodge and the Hector Lodge. Um, so those program coordinators oversee one of those two lodges. And then moving into the fall, which runs from September 3rd until the beginning of December, um, we have, again, those counselor positions available, the team lead positions and coordinators. Here's just some fun photos of uh, actually in these photos are a lot of international staff that I that I know quite well and a lot of friends of mine that I've I've met at camp, you know, built great friendships with. And uh, now, you know, I, I feel so fortunate to have friends that are all over the world, um, you know, just having an absolute blast at camp. You can see also in these photos, um, you know, some of the activities that we do, as well as the different seasons here at camp. So if you're coming for the summer season, you can expect things like in the, the two photos on the right. Um, if you're coming in any other season, and even sometimes in the summer, you can expect things um, like what you see on the left here. Um, so we have a lot of, of programs where we're running in the snow. Um, and that could happen really any time outside the summer, I would say. Um, and, you know, even at times in the summer, in, in late August at times, um, we have snow when we're out on our expeditions. Um, so you have to be prepared for the different seasons. And this is something that if you're coming from a different country, um, that when you get here, we do a lot of things like gear swaps and kind of community exchanges where we can, we can support you getting the gear that you might need that you haven't brought with you. Um, things like winter boots and, and nice warm jackets and whatnot. This is just a staff testimonial. Um, I won't read it, but uh, feel free to, to have a read of this, but I'll just kind of summarize a little bit. This is from uh, Will Oakes, who's uh, currently our expedition supervisor. Um, he's somebody who came from England um, and he started off as a counselor. He worked his way through a lot of the different sections that we went through. Um, and he, he became a really big part of our expedition program here. And he's, uh, he's somebody that we look to um, for guidance on, uh, on developing resources, um, in terms of expedition programming, he's a lot, he's the person who goes out and does a lot of the scouting of, of new areas and leads a lot of our training. So he's, he's gone through a, a development here at camp. Um, and I'll just read the, 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 the middle paragraph here where he says, beyond the professional growth camp has given me so much. I have benefited from the most welcoming community, friends, and mentors. It has kept me in the Rocky mountains where I've grown into a rock climber, ice climber, trail runner, paddler, backcountry skier, and more. It gives me the best employment in the summer and allows me the time in the winter to teach skiing and ice climb as well. Um, so Will is somebody who's a huge advocate for the benefit that camp, that camp has for not only the youth that we serve in our programs, but also the staff members that come to work with us. Um, we, do, we do take a lot of care when it comes to investing in our staff members. Um, you know, one of the things that I want to touch on here is, is, is what you might leave with when, it, when, when you're moving on from your time at camp. And what I can guarantee is that you're going to leave with something new. 
you know, you're going to have learned something new. You're going to have received some training that you didn't have before. And, and you're going to leave with some confidence and a, a sense of self that you may not have had before you got here. And I can speak to that personally in terms of my, uh, my experience here at camp. It's been a big part of, you know, my life and, and who I am as a, as a person and a, as a friend. And, uh, you know, that is something that, that I will hold dear for my entire life. So I just want to say thank you. Um, again, my name is Trent. I'm the camp director here at Camp Chief Hector. I've got my email listed here, so please feel free to record that. Um, if, if there's anything that you didn't have a chance to ask or, or didn't, get, get, didn't get said in this presentation, feel free to send me an email and I'd be happy to chat with you more. Yeah, thank you so much, Trent. Um, we'll open it up to questions, but I just kind of want to briefly chime in. So if, if you've watched this and this looks like something you'd like to do this summer, just keep working on your CCOSA application. And we're actually doing a virtual hiring fair with Chief Hector uh, in a couple of weeks, October 25th and 26th. So soon you'll be getting an email or you can reach out to your local country office and sign up for an interview slot. And they'll be hiring people during that fair. Um, but I guess let me open up with one question for you, Trent. So uh, I'm just thinking maybe of some of our participants that are like, oh my gosh, this camp looks amazing. I'd love to do it, but I'm not, I don't know if I can, you know, I don't know if I have the skills to be this mountaineer, climber, you know, epic outdoorsman. What, what kind of skills do I need to be able to work for you? Can you speak to that just a little? Absolutely. So, you know, as I went through and talked about the different types of programs that we have, um, we have things ranging all the way from a day camp program all the way up to that 40 day canoe trip through the Northwest Territory. So um, in terms of the necessary skills to work with us, really, you know, the, the answer is, is, is really not anything specific. It's, it's uh, you know, a desire to, to work in the outdoors. It's a desire to work with people and a passion for the outdoors. Um, so really, that's the only prerequisite prerequisite like you saw with will's story um he came here with 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 uh you know a certain level of experience in the outdoors but nowhere near what he he has now um so there's a lot of room for growth here and i think the the desire to learn and grow is really the only pre prerequisite that we require awesome okay that's great um i guess the only so on our end i guess the only requirement would be for the work permit, getting the working holiday too. So mm -hmm. if you have any questions about that, uh, again, your local country office can help and we can give you some tips. And it's a really easy work permit to get so long as you're in one of the countries that it's eligible from. So don't stress that too much. We can walk you through all that. Um, but let's see, I know we got some participants and uh, others on the call. So if you have any questions, now is a great time to pipe up here and ask Trent or myself. We got, uh, I don't know if you saw that one, Trent, but what's the counselor to camper ratio again? I think you said it once, but. Um... Yeah. So in the, in the summertime, it's a two, two counselors to eight campers. Um, and then in the school seasons in the spring and the fall, um, it is one counselor to a group of about 10 students with the, uh, with the support of a teacher as well. Awesome. What and uh, I think one of the neatest things about camp is getting matched up with your co-counselor, Trent. Do you mm -hmm. do you do you work hard to match people with someone that you think is going to be a good fit? What are some of the things you think of when you're pairing up someone with their their co-counselors? Absolutely, uh, we have we have a about a two week uh, training period. Um, uh, well, actually, depending on the season you come, there's a one week training period before the spring program starts. Um, and then we have a two week training program before the summer season starts. And then another one week training program before the fall season starts. So that really gives us a great opportunity to get to know the staff, to get to understand their skill set a bit more, and then learn about, okay, what type, what type of pairing is going to work well here. And one of the things that we really take into account is, um, is mentorship and um, having somebody who's new be paired with someone who can provide really great mentorship for them. Um, the reality of working as a camp counselor is that your, your training period is never enough. You know, uh, We do our best to prepare you for what you're going to experience as a counselor, but the reality is that there's always gonna be ongoing lessons to be learned throughout your work and being paired with the right mentor is a big part of that. So, 
Uh, we got another one. Uh, Akupras, she's been, they've been horse riding for a few years, providing lessons for kids, but I don't have any certificates. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, uh, a lot of our programs do require specific certifications. Like for example, if you want to work in the canoe program, or if you want to be leading one of our long expedition hike programs, there are specific uh, certificates that we require for that. Things like things like uh, wilderness first aid, things like our paddle Canada certifications. Um, but with our horse programming, if you do have specific certifications, it's great. Um, but that experience that you have, despite not having a, certi a certification is still something that we would take into account when considering your application for sure. Awesome, thanks Trent. And uh, let's see, Christoph was hoping that we could remind him on dates again. So Christoph, yeah. Christoph the well, let Trent go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll just jump back through here so you can see them as well. Um, so our uh, our spring pro uh, program is starting April twenty seventh, um, and that'll be running until about June fifteenth. Our summer pr uh, positions start June eighteenth, and then run until all the way uh, until the end of August. And then the fall program is uh, from oh sorry, fall program is from September third until December sixth. Awesome. And Chief Hector needs you to be able to work two of those three seasons or all three if you want to. So just keep that in mind. You either need to be able to come until or come in April or stay until December. So one of the two. Um, let's see. How many? See another question there about uh, about winter camp. Yeah. Um, so we do have a winter program as well. We, we, we continue on with a school season throughout the winter. Um, my understanding is that that might not be super applicable for uh, the specific visa that, that you'll need in order to come through the CCUSA program. Um, but it is something that is available. And if you, you know, if you continue to work with us beyond um, uh, this visa, then it is something that we have available for sure. Awesome. And how many seasons are there for summer camp um, time frame for each season? Did that answer your question, Indira? Yeah, just to confirm for you there, Indira, um, summer camp is technically just one season. So that runs, essentially the program is open from the beginning of July until the end of August. Um, so we run that that season, you know, as one specific season. Within that season, we have what we call sessions. So generally they're two week sessions with a day off in between. Um, so we have, we have four of those two week sessions with kind of like a bonus one week session at the end of the summer um, where we have um, um, some specific one week programs that we offer. And Luke was wondering how many staff do you have, which I was, I'm guessing it changes a little between the seasons and mm -hmm. participants, maybe campers. Absolutely. Yeah. So at, at our high point um, this, this year for 2024, we're looking at about 2,800 campers for the whole summer season. And then we'll have a staff team of around 140 to 150 seasonal staff members that will work in that program um, on top of you know, our kitchen staff and our, our maintenance staff and our full-time staff as well. So, um, you know, the number's pushing closer to around 200 people at, uh, at our high point. Awesome. Christoph, can you participate only in a spring and, oh, only in spring and fall. Interesting. Would that be two of the three, Trent? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, I would say I wouldn't want to limit you in any way. So I would say if that's something that you're interested in doing, um, I would say generally, you know, the most popular kind of time frame is to come for the spring and the summer. Um, but if that's something you're interested in doing, we can definitely talk more about how that might work for sure. Yeah, so, so the working holiday to everyone, it's depending on the country you're from, it's either valid for one year or for two years. So we'll send you the link to apply if you're interested and it's an online application process. And what it is, is it's, you put your name in the pool, uh, which is like a lottery system. And then every Friday they draw names out and you get to apply for it. And depending on the country you're from, um, I don't, uh, anyhow, the odds are really good that you'll get picked. <laughs> Some countries have a pretty small quota. Um, but, and then some are only good for a year and actually Australians and New Zealanders can stay for up to two years. Uh, so once you get approved for the visa, you have a year to enter the country and then you can stay for either a year or two years. So that's how the, the work permit works. Um, 
Indira, no, you don't need to be a full-time student for Chief Hector. There are summer camps that we work with that do require student status, but not Chief Hector. Um, so I see what Christoph was saying. He's got a, a placement in summer for Maine, but so for before and after. Right. So Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, Christoph, it's definitely something we could look at. And I would encourage you just to reach out to, to us and to Robert and 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 figure out the, the logistics around that. Awesome. And we got just a couple of minutes. We've run a little long, but um, we, we can definitely stick around and ask answer any more questions you guys have. Um, so don't hold back. Um, but otherwise, uh, we've got, like I say, you can speak with your local country office. They're a great resource. They can answer all your questions about Chief Hector or any of the other camps that we work with or the signing up for the virtual fair. So um, if that's, if there's no other questions, we'll wrap it up and hopefully we'll see you again back in October for the, the hiring fair. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak about camp. It's my favorite thing to talk about. So um, thank you all for coming. Thanks for your questions. And I look forward to connecting with you more. Yeah, thank you, Trent. This has been great. Perfect. Thank you okay. For, uh, for joining everyone else. <laughs> so have a good night, everybody. Okay. Bye for now. Yeah. Goodbye. I'm trying to figure out how to. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Theo. <laughs> bye bye. Thank <laughs> you. Care.